Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates, Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the things I learned recently from Dialectical Behavior Therapy, DBT for short. Today, we're gonna to talk all about distress tolerance. If you're curious, stay tuned. Thank you to everyone who voted in the poll that I put up this morning asking what video you want. And if you'd still like me to do the other video too, please let me know and I'd be happy to do the myths of therapy as well. I wanna thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I've actually been wanting to work with BetterHelp for a long time. What I really love is that you have the opportunity to find a therapist a bit quicker. If you've been looking for a therapist, you know that it can be really hard to find therapists these days with availability. So BetterHelp helps to pair you up with a therapist you have the ability to change therapists at any time if you're not happy with the therapist that you've been paired with for any reason. You can talk to a therapist in a private online environment. I see a lot of my clients virtually and I know a lot of them appreciate the convenience of being able to see their therapist on their lunch break or from their own room. Just the convenience of not having to get acclimated to a new space while you're talking about really sensitive and personal things. BetterHelp has 20,000 plus therapists that you could choose from. They have expertise in all different areas that you could narrow down based on your needs. All you have to do is fill out a questionnaire about what you're looking for and within 48 hours, they will have you paired with a therapist. If you are interested in trying BetterHelp, please use this link, which is also in the description box below. You'll be able to get started on that questionnaire and find the best therapist for you. So. I recently did a training, a five day intensive training, all about dialectical behavior therapy. I'm not gonna go into depth about what that is, a, because I'm so new to it, I would not be the best person to teach you about dialectical behavior therapy, but also because that five days was literally only half of the training, and that's still considered to be a short-term training for DBT. But what I can tell you about the basics of it is that dialectical means that you can have two or more truths, even if they are opposite, be true at the same time. It is a modality, really, of working with clients or a mindset of working with clients that is very manualized where you're essentially teaching your clients skills to help them be more effective in multiple areas of their life whether that be dealing with stress whether that be being more effective in their interpersonal relationships there is a module or a skill that you could teach your clients dbt was originally developed by marsha linehan in the 70s and 80s now i'm just being introduced to this but the training was so amazing there were so many things that i walked out knowing that I wanted to utilize it right away with my clients, whether or not I was gonna stick to the structured manual or not. So I wanted to share some of those things with you. I'm gonna be talking about ways to distract yourself when you're dealing with distress. And this is recommended a lot of times, especially in situations where you're not able to really impact or influence change regarding that situation. DBT has a lot of acronyms. We'll be going through the acronym ACCEPTS today that will help you be able to process stressful events and have a very regimented way or options for dealing with it. So whether you're dealing with a difficult person if you're at a difficult job, places where you might not have that much influence or impact over your surroundings, how can you manage yourself in those situations in a way where you're not blowing up at people and exploding emotionally or completely shutting down and imploding? So the acronym here is ACCEPTS. Okay, so A is an activity. Find an activity that you can delve into to kind of help distract you from what you're dealing with that is stressing you out. And I'm just gonna share with you the options that would work the best for me, and you can use them maybe as inspiration for things that would work well for you. For me, it would be something like maybe reading a book. That's going to help distract me, or watching a movie. I also love to get active, maybe you know, do a hike, go on a walk, 
things, activities that I can put my energy into instead of focusing and ruminating on the stressful thing that's bothering me. The C in accepts, the first one stands for contributing. So how can you give back? You know, that helps us to feel good a lot of times when we're able to contribute positively to another person's experience. Even if you're drowning in stress, being able to help someone else could put you in a position where you feel better about yourself and your own situation. So one way you might contribute, I like to sometimes go and visit with my husband's grandmother, spend time with her, can make me feel great because I know she loves to see us. I also like to give back to organizations I care about. Each month, I know that we donate clothes and things like that to people who have been displaced from their homes due to intimate partner violence, uh, typically women and children, and we'll donate clothes, we'll donate pots, pans, sometimes furniture, and contributing in that way makes me feel like even if there are so many things out of my control right now, at least I have the option to use my resources to help others. And it doesn't have to necessarily be giving. It could be just be calling someone up and telling them hi, right? That can also be contributing to someone else's positive day. The next C stands for comparisons. Now, when we compare ourselves to other people, we typically compare ourselves to people that we feel are doing better than us. But sometimes comparing comparisons can be healthy when we use it to acknowledge the elements of our life that we can be grateful for. So if there are things about your life that you actually appreciate, maybe you have a wonderful relationship with your mother and you recognize that a lot of your friends struggle in their relationships with their mother. Or maybe if you compare yourself to how you were a year ago, two years ago, you know, maybe your body wasn't in the place you wanted it to be a year ago and now it is. Or maybe a year ago you were in school and now you're working at a job that you enjoy. Maybe you had toxic friendships that were really negatively impacting your emotional state, but now you've been able to eliminate some of those relationships that were bringing you down. Compare yourself to how you used to be, and that might help you view yourself in a way that is more positive as well. The E in accepts stands for emotions, and this is where you are trying to really manipulate your own emotions to counteract whatever you're feeling in response to this stressful or distressing event. So some options for that could be like, I'm feeling emotional. I'm the kind of person that actually has to prompt myself to cry. So I have a sad songs playlist. I have movies like The Notebook that every time I watch it, I'm gonna cry. And that helps me to process my emotions. But if you're looking to kind of counteract sad emotions, maybe you could watch a scary movie. Maybe you could go to a comedy show. There are so many different options that could just help jumpstart your emotions to a different place, going to a haunted house, for example, just things that can manipulate your emotions in a way that will be a little bit more effective for you if you feel like the stress and angst you're feeling in response to this distressing event is really consuming you and taking over your ability to control or have any influence over your own emotions. The P in accept stands for pushing away. And what that really means is it's kind of like creating a cognitive block between you and this problem. So you might just mentally envision yourself putting the problem on a shelf. You might just tell yourself that every time you think about this problem, you're gonna speak to it. You could just say, no, you don't have control over me. I'm not thinking about this. You could even put yourself in a position where you willfully deny the problem, right? You choose to deny the problem at least for an hour, right? Just pushing it away, putting yourself in a place where you can just focus on what you do have control over, which right now might not be the problem, okay? Just putting it to the side until you're able to come back to it and deal with it. The T and accept stands for thoughts. You want to influence more control over your thoughts. And you can do that by doing activities that engage your mind, something like puzzles, maybe a crossword puzzle or Sudoku. Some of the examples in the workbook that they gave us would be like, repeat the lyrics to a song or try to figure out the lyrics to a song. And counting, 
Counting is a great way to change your thought. You could count the number of people that pass you. You could count the number of tiles in the ceiling or on the floor. Counting is a great way because you have to really focus on that or finding something in the room that goes along with each letter of the alphabet. Something to just re-engage your mind and thoughts in a way that's going to move you away from this distressing event. Remember, right now, all we're focused on is distractions. This is the first step in distress tolerance sometimes is helping you to step away from those ruminating thoughts because what ends up happening is you re-prompt yourself, you re-prompt yourself, you get angrier and angrier or sadder and sadder and the negative emotions just keep getting compounded. So the focus for this exercise with distress tolerance is distraction. And the last letter, the S in accepts stands for sensations. This is the one I really, really love. So it could be something like a stress ball. If you want to squeeze a stress ball, if you've got like a furry blanket, just rub that. If you've got a pet, you know, petting your pet could be really helpful. Some people can reset with by putting like a ice cube in their mouth, an ice cube along their hand or wrist. So many different ways that you can just re-engage your body using sensations. I'm huge on showers. So if I'm feeling particularly stressed, I don't care how clean I am. I'm hopping in the hottest shower possible or taking a nice hot bubble bath with scents of lavender or orange. Something that's really going to re-engage my senses and kind of help my my mind focus on a different area. Those are some of the ways that you can distract yourself from distress. And there are other ways that we could address distress through self-soothing, through mindfulness. There are so many different tactics. So if you are looking for additional ways to deal with distress, please let me know. I'd be happy to do another video about this. I learned so, so much in that training. And when I say this was like just the tip of the iceberg, there was so much information and I have another week to go in this training. Again, my name is Stephanie Yates, Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short. I appreciate you for watching this video. Again, I ask that you like this video, subscribe to my channel and share it with anyone else that you think might find it valuable. And remember to check out BetterHelp in the description box below. Thanks again for watching all the way until the end. That really, really helps me. I thank you, thank you, thank you. Why so